Good morning, Doug. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Fantastic, man. It's great to see you. The Evil Knievel Museum in Topeka became the number one museum in Kansas almost immediately, like within a year. Won a Thea Award for at uh, the Disney Award Show. And you are the number one attraction at the number one museum. So pretty awesome, right? Yeah, that's uh, to even be affiliated with Evil Knievel in the museum is just awesome, you know. Uh, we had, you know, Mike Patterson and uh, Latham McKay. They, they they did so much work to get that thing together, and, and it came out so unbelievable. Um, I, just anybody who has any interest in Evil Knievel whatsoever really needs to get to that museum. It's, yeah. It's incredible. <clears throat> so have you... You strapped on a, a, a helmet with that weighed 15 pounds, right? Uh, 15 pounds more than a normal helmet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how'd you get roped into doing that? Oh, it's not roped into it, man. It was uh, when they told me what it was for, we had to do it. You know, it's like the idea that somebody could do a motorcycle jump in virtual reality is incredible. And I, you know, I, I like I said, I wasn't sure I was going to come out. But we jumped over those 15 police cars, and uh, yeah, we, we landed it okay with that big, heavy helmet. But the I went and I did the ride once I got it up and going. <laughs> yes. After I got done, I felt like I had done my first practice jump. It's that real. It was just incredible. Uh -huh. And have you watched how much joy this brought others? <laughs> A couple times. Mm -hmm. I saw some lady screaming through the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was as you know, anytime you can put a smile on somebody's face, you've had a good day. And that's been my job my whole life. You know, I, I, I just love seeing people happy. Yeah. It's working in Topeka, whatever you're doing. <laughs> I haven't been there in a few years. I'd like to get back to a lot of nice people I know out there. Dude, it's time. So yeah, the, uh, we're, we're talking about going out there. Uh, I know that you talked about it. My book just came out. We're talking about going out there to do a book signing. So if anybody wants to uh, wants to come out and meet me, I'll be at the museum. Uh, I don't have the date yet. I still have to confirm it with them. But uh, and Doug Danger, Dare to Dream just came out. Uh, you can order your book online at DougDanger.net. Or you can just wait until you get to the museum and I'll have books for sale there and I'll sign them for you. So where are you taking your speeches? Do you go to uh, children's charities or schools or um, shows? Well, I, I started out doing school speeches uh, for the kids to stay away from drugs and an anti-bullying anti thing. <clears throat> we did the Boys and Girls Clubs in Topeka. Um, oh, cool. We're, we're getting ready to do some corporate stuff now. It's uh, about teamwork because out in when, – when I set that world record in – uh, Sturgis a few years back I'm the star and I'm the one who got all the recognition but it, there was almost 500 people involved in putting that jump together and, <laughs> and giving credit to your team and another part of your inspiring story is the team that uh, saved your life from cancer yeah uh, that was that was a pretty pretty incredible ride uh, not one I care to do again <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, <clears throat> I I had told uh, the the oncologist when he told me I had stage four cancer and I had six three to six months left to live. <clears throat> I you know I, I just looked at him. I said, "You're telling me I have no chance?" He says, "They've got this great chemo that they're using that they're getting great results from." He says, "But it's so powerful; it's either going to kill you or it's going to cure you." And I wanted to call and see if mm. you'd be interested in trying it. And I'm like, "Hell yeah!" I says, when can we start? He says, I knew you were going to say yes, so come on in tomorrow. I've already got the chemo here. <clears throat> so we went in, and here I am. It was 2011. I had cancer in 2020. Here I am, still still breathing. Yeah, you still look great. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, man. <clears throat> and not the, that's not the first time you've been in the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have my own parking spot over at UMass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I've broken 59 bones now in my career. And uh, <clears throat> it's not always easy being a daredevil. But, you know, Evil Knievel, 
he was a great inspiration. And his, his motto was, you're never a failure until you refuse to get up and dust yourself off and try again. And I've always lived by that mentality. How did you, you decided at the age of five or six that you wanted to become a daredevil, right? I mean, we all did. <laughs> we all wanted to do that. Well, Evil Knievel did Caesar's Palace, and I, I was there on my father's shoulders, and I turned around, and I said, Dad, I think I could have made that. <laughs> I hadn't even learned to ride a bicycle yet. And so I went home and learned how to ride a bicycle. got all scun up doing that stuff, and I, I just saw Evil Knievel, and, you know, he was coming back to try it again. Well, not, not Caesar's Palace, but he was getting back on and jumping again, and it's like, I thought that was so cool. You know, and he always talked about don't do drugs. And there's the coolest guy in the world. He didn't need drugs to be cool. So <laughs> I didn't need them. So what steps did you take then to, to, to make your dream a reality then? Well, <clears throat> I had a newspaper route and I went, made some money so that we could buy bicycles and plywood and build some ramps. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I went over, you know, after I jumped the bicycles for quite a while, you know, we jumped a bunch of cars on bicycles. And after we did that, I, in my high school, uh, there's a funny story <laughs> about me leaving my high school, uh, not willingly, uh, had an episode where I rode a motorcycle through it, but I ended, up going <laughs> to a, I ended up going to a vocational school. And when I went there, the carpentry class, I, I asked them if they could help me build my first set of motorcycle ramps. And they you know, said, yeah, I mean, if you don't ask, you never know the answer. And <clears throat> these guys said, yeah, they built me a nice set of ramps. I did my first motorcycle jump, made all the newspapers, uh, local TV, and I was off and running then. Now I just wanted some place to jump. I didn't even care about the money then. Mm -hmm. And everybody started calling, and I started chasing. And here I am today, Guinness Book of World's Record holder. Got my own book out. And just keep trying. Never give up. Yep, right on. Uh, where'd you learn the showmanship part of it? Oh, I was, uh, I had a guy named Russ Conway that was going to be my agent. And he says, the first thing you got to do is he says, you got to learn, learn showmanship. Yeah. He, he hooked me up with the Joey Chitwood thrill show. I don't know if you ever heard of it. It's, uh, Audible yeah. Bills. They're from Topeka, Kansas. <clears throat> oh, originally. Yes. Yes. Um, they can't, you know, they moved down to Tampa, Florida. Yeah, it was incredible, and I went with them to learn showmanship. Oh, cool. They, they taught me all about, you know, what it was all about. It wasn't always about, like, see, for me, a great show is what I think is the greatest jump that could be done. And that's not the entertainment to a lot of the people. You bring in pyrotechniques, you bring in a good speech, you give a good uh, a, a motivational speech to them that it excites them and involves them. And now, now they're on your side rooting for you. What people don't realize, it, it requires a lot of sacrifice. I'm getting mm -hmm. ready to do some B-rolls for a big TV show that we're putting together right now. And we've got to put all new plywood on the ramp so I can go do a couple of practice jumps for them to film. And it's, you know, you, you give up a lot of stuff. I got to give up my time. I'm out here sweating my butt off changing the plywood on the ramps. It's, it's hard yeah. work. You got to decide if you want it. If you want it. There's work involved and there's sacrifice, but go get it, man, because it's there waiting for you. Focus on what you want to be in life. You know, everybody's got to want to be something. All you got to do is start believing that you can be. I wanted to be the best jumper in the world. And I, you know, I was six years old, seven years old watching Evil Knievel. I was there at Caesar's Palace when he jumped. I was only five years old. And I said, I want to be that guy. I, I, I always had some doubt whether or not I'd ever get to where I am today. But mm -hmm. if you just keep trying, things just start falling into place. And you can be anything you want to be. You want to be president of the United States, you can work your way up. It, it just start. Start with something. And then get going on it. It's like, we're going to get this done. Well, dude, I cannot wait for you to come to Topeka. I didn't even know you were coming. That'll be great. And <laughs> your, your book's out. Can you tell us again how to get that book? Yeah, the funny thing is, say they don't even, you didn't even know that I was going there. I'm not sure they know yet either. <laughs> uh, okay, I won't tell them. <laughs> I, I, I talked with them. Uh, my buddy Lou Ray is bringing out uh, one of Evil's bikes, an original American Eagle that he's getting all shined up and cleaned up. And I saw sure that, that on the Facebook. 
Yeah, he's bringing that out. And he had talked to me about coming out to do a book signing at the same time. So I, I, I still got to talk with those guys, but I'm pretty sure that that's, that's what I'd like to go out. I, I haven't been to the museum in a couple of years now, and I got to go back. I got to ride my own jump again, too. <laughs> but anyways, the book, it's called Doug Danger, Dare to Dream. You can, you can get it on Amazon or any of the other places, but if you go to DougDanger.net and click on the spot that says get an autographed copy, it will be sent right from me. And That's I so nice of you. Well, Doug, th thanks for being such an inspiration to all of us in so many different parts of our lives. Uh, I've got one more favor to ask of you. It's another virtual jump. If you're willing to strap us on the back of your motorcycle and uh, take us out of 2020, just oh yeah, yeah, okay. vault us right over it. Yeah, We're, it's uh, it, you know what? We'll put a big 2020 and I'll jump it, and it'll on the land river <laughs> 2021. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. I'm ready. I'm ready, buddy. <laughs> well, it's been a rough year, but again, remember, the bright light is waiting. This whole garbage to end. Uh, a lot of people think it's going to end after November. I don't mm -hmm. know, but there's a lot of people. Coronavirus is a serious thing, people. Pay attention, be as safe as you can. Doesn't mean stop living. Stay out there living. Just protect yourself. Uh, go on living, man. America's the greatest country in the world, and enjoy. Right on. Well, Doug, good luck with your book, and as always, happy landings. All right, man. Happy landings, guys.